Hi, Julie Usher. Today I'm going to tell you how to make espresso granita. Actually, an espresso granita parfait. It's layered with a mascarpone, a mascarpone cream, which is made of mascarpone cheese, whipped cream, and a little bit of marsala. First off, this particular video is part of a taste made collaboration of summer desserts. All of my taste made partners have come together with their favorites and you'll find them listed in my video description and also hopefully some visuals of them at the end of this video so you can quickly link off to them. This dessert I love because you can either do it with a cream or do it without. Without the cream it's no fat and it's super light and very very summery. It's kind of an adult sorbet except it's a granita. We'll be talking about the differences between granita and sorbet also in this video in a little bit. The other cool thing about this recipe is it's really quick and at summertime people like to be relaxing. They don't like to be in a hot kitchen. So it really only requires sugar, which I've got in my canister here, a little bit of lemon zest, marsala, and brewed coffee. I like to use a really strong espresso ground grind. Okay, so let's start out by making the granita base because that needs to actually um, steep a little bit and then cool down before we can actually freeze it. And then I'll talk about the differences between granita and sorbet. This is also an interesting twist on a classic dessert. That's how I often come up with recipes. I was thinking of tiramisu and how could I lighten that up for summer. So this basically has all the same elements and flavor profile, the, the espresso, the mascarpone cheese, the cream, but what it's missing is uh, the lady fingers and the chocolate shavings. So it's a little bit lighter even with the cream and then super light if you don't include the cream. Okay, so let's get the coffee brewing. I'll need two cups of brewed, strong brewed espresso coffee at the end of the day. And I like to do this in my French press. You can do it any which way to get a really super strong coffee flavor because again, this is kind of an adult dessert. It's not super sweet. I use about three quarters a cup of grinds and I use my French press to about three cups of water. If I fill this up, this is water has been boiling. If I fill this up to the metal line at the top, that's about three cups of water in here. And by the time it brews and I press it out, I'll have just a little bit over two cups brewed, which is what I need for the recipe. So I'm gonna let that sit aside for about five minutes to steep and then we'll plunge it and press it. In the meantime, let's prepare the other, let me move this hot water out of the way so I don't do anything silly with it. Let's prepare the other ingredients. This recipe calls for half a cup of sugar. So I've got two cups of liquid, half a cup of sugar. By volume, that's about 20% to 25% of sugar to liquid. So um, we're starting with a relatively low sugar concentration. That's one thing that distinguishes granita from sorbet. It has a relatively low sugar concentration. Typically it's in the 25 to 26% range by weight. In my particular case, it's in this recipe, it's 20% by weight. Whereas with sorbets, they're closer to 35 to 36, and that makes a difference because the higher the sugar content, the creamier something will end up. This is, granita is gonna be icy and very crystalline and very refreshing, not smooth and creamy like a sorbet. And one of the key differences is the sugar content. It's got a lower sugar content, so it freezes with larger crystals and more of an icy texture. I wanna get a little bit of lemon in here. That just tends to, I think, highlight the espresso flavor and give this a, a little less of a muddy taste. Sometimes coffee can be a little muddy. So I'm using my channel zester, this is what this handy tool is, to uh, just zest about half a lemon into this half cup of sugar. And that's gonna give it a nice flavor. Once this has gotten thoroughly strengthened, we'll plunge it, measure the two cups in here, and let that steep for about 30 minutes. We wanna add the coffee while it's still warm to dissolve the sugar and also get that lemon juice flavor in there. But I still got a few more minutes on that. So I'm gonna um, sideline here and talk a little bit more about the differences between granita and sorbet. And remember I told you one was the sugar content. I'm working with a lower sugar content with a granita. Um, how do I know all those numbers that I, that I tossed around? There are a number of different ways you can measure the sugar content of a syrup. And some of these tools are used in winemaking, some are used in pastry. I'm gonna have a whole nother video that talks about the use of these tools. This is a refractometer. It's an optical device that you, you put a few drops of syrup on there and you look through the lens and that'll tell you what the sugar concentration is. The only problem with this is it works within a limited range of uh, sugar densities. 
This is a um, hydrometer, also known as a saccharometer. It has a larger range on it, so it's better for sugar work. The only complication with it is you need to have a large volume of liquid because this needs to plunge into a tu tube. It bobs, basically, to tell you what the right level is on the scale. And you have to be working with really large volumes. We're working with two cups of liquid, so it's not really practical today. I'd need a really tall, full container so it would bob up to the right level, and we don't have that. So in the absence of these fancy tools, this guy's a seven to ten dollar tool. This is like a seventy-five dollar tool. You can do some home tests, and that's what I want to show you here. Here I've got my basic, already made granita base. This is what we're making right now, and you can see it's kind of fluid and loose. And here I've got a sugar syrup. It's about by by volume, it's one cup of sugar to one cup of water. So it's you, I can tell you, it's a much higher concentration of sugar in this mixture than there is in my syrup because we have I have only half a cup to two, two cups of liquid in there. This is important if you're making sorbet or granita and you're starting a recipe from scratch and not working with a tried and true one like you are with my recipe, if you're experimenting and want to know if you've got your ratios at the right place, this is, this is why I'm showing you this. So I'm going to drop this egg, clean egg, into the sugar syrup and typically if a large egg, if about a third to a quarter of it is exposed, you're at a good point for sorbet. The thicker it is, the higher the egg will float. And then I'm going to dump it in my granita base just by contrast. If I drop it in, it's going to barely float. So typically a granita will be showing maybe the equivalent of a little bit larger than a dime size here. This is a little bit under an inch of the egg showing, whereas I had a good two or a little bit more than two inches of the egg showing in the thicker, more concentrated sugar syrup. So that's a good home test to do. In my other video, I will show you how to use these other tools because if you're going to get really scientific about developing these kinds of recipes, having a refractometer or a hydrometer or a saccharometer um, is very, very helpful. I'm just going to plunge the coffee down. I'm going to measure off my two cups of coffee and you want to get it warm, it's still quite warm, into the sugar and lemon juice, as I, lemon zest, as I said, just, whoops, I guess I overshot. So we can dissolve the sugar, clean that up. I'll give that a little bit of a whisk, just to make sure it's dissolved. And then I will sit this out at room temperature till it comes down to room temp before I freeze it, otherwise I'm heating up my whole freezer. But we're going to march ahead to the freezing process because I've got a batch already mixed up and show you how that's done. Before you go ahead and freeze this, normally at a minimum I'd let that steep 30 minutes so all the lemon juice, the, ec the oils from the lemon zest are kind of extracted by heat so that that flavor infuses. But before I were to freeze it, if I were going to freeze this, after 30 minutes I would strain out the lemon zest so that we don't get those big chunks in the sorbet. I didn't need to grate this lemon zest because I don't want it in the end product, so just cutting it into big coarse strips is adequate for this recipe. Okay, so my mixture is cooled down and strained, and I don't want to forget the marsala. That's another classic ingredient in tiramisu, and this is kind of a lean and light variation of that, so I'm just going to mix that in. This is one tablespoon of marsala. Mind you, alcohol will inhibit the freezing of a granita or sorbet, so if you add too much, you won't, it won't freeze. So this is, happens to be a nice amount that adds a little bit of flavor and nuttiness and sweetness. It's a sweet marsala to the blend without inhibiting the freezing. Freezing is the other thing that distinguishes sorbet from granita. First with sugar concentration and the method of freezing is what's different. In order to create large, a large crystalline structure with granita, we actually pour the base into a shallow pan and we freeze it slowly and we stir it. We agitate it as it freezes with a fork typically until the whole base is frozen. And it's much easier to do this in a shallow pan because if, imagine if you were to dump it into something very tall and narrow, you'd never get even freezing of it. So by contrast, sorbet is typically churned at a much higher speed and incorporates more air. So that's another reason that sorbet ends up creamier than granita. And I'm going to show you a version of the granita actually churned. Even with granita, you can end up with a slightly more creamy texture if you handle the churning or freezing of it differently. Okay, so this pan is a 15 by 10 inch glass pan. 
which is adequate for my two cups of sugar syrup, but I'm only gonna, I'm gonna use a smaller pan that actually fits into my very small freezer that I have up here. So I'm only gonna pour off about half of this base into this smaller pan, just so, so we have about the same kind of freezing time on it. So typically when it's poured into that larger pan, it won't, it won't even be a quarter inch deep. And that just, that just ensures relatively rapid and even freezing. So into the freezer it goes. I'm gonna give it about, this is starting at room temperature, the liquid, so it might take 20 minutes or more, depending on the freezer temperature, for crystals to start to form. And when they start to form around the outer edge of the pan, that's when I wanna give it my first stir with the fork, and then continuously thereafter, about every 10, 15 minutes until the whole thing's frozen. Okay, the granita has been in, I'd say, for about 20 minutes now, and it's just beginning to form ice crystals along the edge, and that's when you wanna start breaking it up, just by stirring it until it's sort of uniformly crystallized. Any big crystals off the edge. Okay, so I'm out of, I'm out of the freezer. Actually, the granita's out of the freezer. And this is the batch that I stirred today. You saw me do a first stir earlier. I did another two or three stirs every 10 minutes since then. And this is the final result. It's nice and dry. It falls off the fork light and fluffy, relatively small crystals. There's some big ones here. If you don't like those, you can break those up just with the back of the fork. Um, but I kind of like some chunkiness to it. But the key thing to note is how it falls off the fork. I like to eat it at this stage. So this is one of those desserts you don't have to, you could make it far in advance, but you don't have to. It's actually better like straight out of the fridge. And the whole process start to finish takes maybe 30 minutes. This is the granita I made yesterday. It started out just like that but in sitting in the fridge overnight, it got a little, some of it just, it just coalesces a little bit more and sticks to the bottom of the pan. I can get it back to that same texture, but I have to break the crystals up a lot more to do that. And sometimes uh, just, it's never quite the same. It's never quite as ethereal as when it comes um, straight out of the freezer. But again, if you want to make it ahead, you can. I took the same base and I churned it in an ice cream machine at a higher speed. And what that does is it breaks up the formation of sugar crystals so you get um, much more quickly and uniformly and to a smaller size. So you get a much more creamy crystal, you know, much more creamy, even texture, if you will. You'll notice no big, large, um, you won't notice all the little chunks of sugar there. It's one homogeneous mass. Even so, it's got an icy finish to it that you won't have with a store-bought sorbet, which has the higher sugar content. It's gonna be really, really um, creamy because it was churned both quickly, much in that manner, and it also has the higher sugar content. So that just kind of reinforces the two differences between the products. This is a store-bought sorbet. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and plate up my dessert, and I am gonna use the cream. You could just eat that straight up but I am gonna use the cream in there too, because I like, I like the contrast of kind of crunchy and creamy, the granita being crunchy and my cream being nice and smooth. And again, I have the recipe for the cream on my website and you'll see the link in my video description. You could plop there, that in there with a spoon, but it's, it gets it in much more nicely and off the sides of the container if you pipe it in as I'm doing. And depending on your preference for cream versus granita, you can use more or less of one or the other. And that's basically it. Top it off with a little lemon curl and you've got a beautiful little dessert. Till next time, live sweetly. And before tuning out, don't forget to check my other Tastemade Partners videos. They have a bunch of summertime desserts as well, which I think you'll enjoy. Thanks.